Hello and welcome everyone once again to this particular edition of Company Law Lectures. In this lecture, we are going to continue with our chapter Company Accounts. We have so far covered Section 128 and, and Rule 3 which speaks about electronic records. So, the books of accounts have to be maintained by the company at the registered office which may be maintained also on the electronic records. Now in Section 129, we are going to discuss about financial statements. Financial statements. Now, Section 129 provides very, very clearly that every company shall maintain its, shall prepare its financial statement and it shall give, it shall give, what shall it give? It shall give a true and fair view of the, it shall give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company. Now, what do you mean by true and fair view? Means it shall give the truth, the uh, actual financial health of the company, what is the operations of the company, how the operations are in terms of financial terms, and how has the company performed in the last year. And it shall be a fair view which is given. It might not be 100% correct, but it has to be a fair view which has been provided by the company so that anybody who reads the financial statement is able to understand what is the performance of the company. Okay, So the financial statement shall give true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company. This is your first point. Okay, First point. Second point is the financial statement, the financial statement shall, shall comply with the accounting standards as has been notified under section 133. Section 133 we will cover it later on but now we have to only understand the financial statement which is prepared by the company it shall be complying the accounting standards provided and notified under section 133. So AS means AS means accounting standards okay. The third point is that the financial statement that is prepared by the company shall be prepared and presented as per schedule 3 as per schedule which schedule as per schedule 3 okay these are the three important points these are the three important points true and fair view comply with the accounting standards and third schedule 3 these are the key three keywords that you have to remember in this section now do all the companies have to follow schedule 3 no there are some exceptions there are some separate acts which have been created and which are given their own format for maintaining their financial statement for such companies for which it is applicable. Now, first company uh, where Companies Act Schedule 3 will not be applicable is insurance company which is governed under Insurance Regulatory Development Authority Act which is IRDA Act. Okay, so it has given its own format over there. Similarly, banking company which is governed under Banking Regulation Act and RBI Act. Similarly, electric supply company which is covered under Electric Supply Company Act and any other class of companies which are governed by special act or a separate act. So I hope these exceptions are clear to you. So whatever companies are registered under the Companies Act will have to follow Schedule 3 and the companies for which a separate act is applicable like the what we have listed over here for them the separate format will be applicable. Okay, so section 129 first part is clear to all of us all of us. Now the next part is saying that the financial statement which is prepared shall be laid down by the company at the AGM of the financial year. At the AGM of that particular financial year. Okay. So why is it laid down in the financial year? In the, in the, uh, why is it laid down in the annual general meeting? Because the shareholders will consider the financial statement and adopt those financial statements by passing the resolution so that it may be considered as final. Okay, so this is your section 129, subsection 2. Okay, now there might be some companies which will be having one or more subsidiaries or associate companies. We all know what is subsidiary company, we all know what is associate company, and there might be also joint ventures in which the company might be working. Now, such accounts of the company of such subsidiary companies and associate company shall also be shall also be accumulated under one financial system, financial statement, which will be known as consolidated financial statement. Consolidated financial. So any company which has one or more subsidiary associate company or joint venture, it shall prepare consolidated financial statement also. So for this company, there are two financial statements that it will have to create. One is its own, that is standalone financial statement. Second is CFS, which is consolidated financial statement and such consolidated financial statements will also be laid down in the annual general meeting. Okay, this part is clear. Now, 
wherever a company has prepared and consolidated financial statement then in that case a separate statement shall be given to the shareholders which will give the salient features of the accounts of the of the statement of the uh, subsidiaries uh, associate company and joint venture so that it is concise and convenient for the shareholders to understand the accounts of the subsidiary at a one particular go itself rather than reading the whole every financial statement they will understand just by reading the salient features okay so that separate statement has to be provided so that is provided over here which is separate statement containing salient features of subsidiary associate companies and joint ventures in form aoc1 shall be provided okay so so far we are clear about section 129 financial statement okay now the last part is who is responsible for preparation of this financial statement for compliance of this particular provision that is section 129 it is the managing director of the company the managing director of the company the whole time director if he is in charge of finance the chief financial officer of the company and any other person charged by the board not all whole time directors but only a director whole time director who is in charge of finance okay so this are the persons who are responsible for the compliance if there is any kind of non compliance then they will be the persons who will be held responsible and will have to pay some penalty okay so i hope section 129 is clear to all of you that's it from me in section 129 in the next lecture i will come up with section 130 which speaks about reopening of books of account so reopening of or recasting of books of account what is the procedure for the same we will go through that in section 130 i hope you all are uh, understanding the lectures and if you are understanding the lectures do comment below it keeps my motivation really really up i have seen so many good comments from everybody i just thank all of you for the comments and likes that you have been giving to this particular channel and the videos that i am providing and i'm glad that is it is helping you all subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed only 25% of the viewers are subscribing so please subscribe to the channel like the video and share this video with your friends so that this can have a maximum reach as much as possible so that's it from me for this particular lecture stay safe stay healthy bye bye